Hey folks, it's video day at Slick Audio, if you can't tell. It's Jim from Slick Audio, how you doing? Um, I want to talk now uh, about some uh, differences between uh, like an i7 processor, uh, which we sell, right now we're selling in our 2100 series. Uh, we are selling some i5s, but I'm going to concentrate and stick with the i7 uh, 8700K. <clears throat> An incredible processor uh, that we can push in six core proc that we can push uh, to, to ridiculous speeds, uh, especially in our tower machines. Um, we can push it up to about five gigahertz, and uh, my God, does it just scream! It screams. Anyway, um, what I'm trying to get at is is you know there's that processor, and then there's the extreme processors. Uh, they come in i7 or i9. We only sell the i9s. Um, in our 4100 series, so that's the difference really between our 2100 series and our 4100 series. So in the i9 world, uh, or should I say extreme processors, extreme procs use a different chipset. Think of the uh, of the new extremes as the the new Xeon processors. So consumer Xeon, they're using the same chipset, they use the same everything, if you will as the Xeons did. So the old chipsets were called X99 for the Xeons, the actual Xeons, and the old i7 Extremes. I said i7, not i9, because it didn't exist yet. The new one, i7 Extreme, or i9 Extreme processors, and uh, are, are X299. Now, Intel uh, has basically pushed, the reason why we're not selling Xeons anymore, like I've got here in my Slick Audio R4000. Um, the reason why we're not selling them is is because they don't make a consumer flavor anymore. And with the licensing that Microsoft has changed now in the latter versions of Windows 10 and also in Windows Server, um, the Xeons are just very impractical uh, because it gets very expensive if you go past 16 cores. Um, and uh, so, so Intel basically, you know, divided the, the, the bunch for us, and they created these i9s to be the new Xeons, if you will. So think of an i9 Extreme, our 4100 series, as the new Xeon. So even though it says i9 Extreme, it really is a, basically a Xeon processor. There are differences, um, and then we could get into the technicalities, like for example, there's 44 PCIe lanes in the i9s versus the old Xeons only had 40. So they're technically better and faster than the old Xeons are. And I've actually benchmarked our 4100 against this guy, uh, which is a ripping 4000 that's got 128 gig of RAM, and, and believe it or not, our 4100's faster. Which it should be, you would think new generation, right? You know, faster machine. But, uh, you know, th there are, it, if you really need an extreme computer to just do ridiculous counts of everything, th then the i9 is where you need to be looking. Um, if you are doing, you know, I hate to use the term basic track count. Basic track count to you could be different than it is to me. To me, a basic track count is 100 tracks, 150 tracks. Um, the i7 will, will douse that easily um, and, uh, and really take care of things. Um, but if you get into, you know, ridiculous quantities of plugins and all blah, 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 that are not DSP driven, in other words, not UAD, not, uh, uh, you know, anything DSP driven, then the i7 will work great. Not that I want to see you spend more money or less money. Um, I want to see you pick the proper machine for your needs. So uh, I'm trying to dispel, and the reason why I'm, ex you know, it started out with i7 and why this video is titled i7 slash X series, was to explain that the difference between the two. So you have an i7 with its 28 lanes, I'm killing my keyboard back here, <laughs> um, my controller. So you have this i7 with its 28 lanes PCIe, PCIe lanes, sorry. Um, and then you have the i9, so call it, you know, the new Xeon of 44 lanes. So, you know, obviously the i9 is going to be able to, to, to take a lot more load and, and handle a lot more. But that doesn't mean that the i7 8700K won't. It, it will do a phenomenal amount of tracks. Uh, if you're a Pro Tools user, it will work phenomenal for you. If you are a, um, a, a, a MADI user in general. Uh, if you don't know what MADI is, you can look it up. But um, I don't want to get into explaining topologies. But uh, basically, if you're doing MADI uh, with like a Burma ship or something like that, then you know the i7 uh, would probably work fine for you as long as your track counts are you know reasonable. Uh, certainly, the i9 um, is going to, to kick some serious tail, um, without a doubt.
So uh, I'm, I'm not playing one down or the other one down. They're both great machines. They both perform very well. Um, it just depends on what you need, but I wanted to explain a little bit more. So hopefully that did work and uh, you understand a little bit more the differences between the i7, I, R2100 series, and the i9 or extremes, R4100 series. So if there's any questions, give us a call. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Take care.